Hey, Neil McDonald here with another Neil Raw video uh, designed to help you see how I do what I do when I um, prep for my phone calls with government customers. Uh, this is a raw video, so I'm just tweaking things as I go along. I'm fine with that. I'm not trying to hit a perfect script, etc. But um, for most of you, you're never going to be able to afford me. And as I work with my paying customers, I figured I could just record what I do. And it's a way for you to look over my shoulder, see the process that I follow, um, how I go about finding the information. If you're in the same business as my customers are, you might even be able to take a lot of my work and use it yourself. That's fine for use. Um, I'm not posting the video until after my customers make their phone calls. So um, it's, it's not really that big of a deal. And everything I share in this video is publicly available. Uh, generally, I started Google like everybody should, and you just begin your research there. Um, it's really important for me to teach people out there that in government contracting, I say uh, government contracting is not a secret, it's just a process. And I want to teach you the process. Homework is a major part of that process. So I want to set the scenario here in this, um, this video. I'm going to prepare for a sales meeting with somebody in the Army, and I'll talk about that person in a minute. Um, but I don't really know anything about them, and I don't really know much about their organization, which doesn't matter. What makes me an expert is I know how to find the information. I know how to prepare for the call. Uh, there's hundreds of thousands of buyers within the federal government. There's hundreds of thousands of people you could be talking to as you do your business development and capture activities. This is just one way of preparing uh, for those meetings. And it's really important that you do prepare. Your customers, our customers, they want to see that we've done our homework, right? And so that's what this video is all about. Let me go ahead and share my screen so you kind of get an idea of what I'll be doing. Um, and I'm going to get started here. So here's the scenario. Uh, let me back up one second to this. This is my call plan sheet. If you've seen me do this before, I use a call plan sheet. It's a single page generally. Um, up above on this page, I've got a supporting information. It's just where I'll put links and other stuff so we can go back and remember what we found on Google. But um, anyways, this call plan sheet that lays out the basics. This person here, and I just zoomed in with my magical hands and nothing happened on my touch screen. Me and my touch screen really need to have a conversation. So um, Sonia is the person we're preparing for on this call. Um, you know, she's a small business specialist. She's out there in the Army Contracting Command in a, uh, a subordinate command called CECOM, and that's Communication and Equipment, I think, so like, or Electronics. Uh, command, but below that, she's at this uh, Information Systems Engineering Command, and that's the part you'll see. So she is the small business specialist out there for this command, and another one called Netcom or Net, uh, Network Command, I think. And um, so I'm digging into that. And what I do with these call plan sheets is, you know, here's the sections that I lay out. First thing I try to do is have an introduction, talking points, something that lets me just break the ice without talking about stuff that doesn't matter, like the weather, your dog, golfing. Um, I want to dive right into the meeting, but sometimes you need to break the ice. And so I'll try to break the ice. Um, in this person's case, I might try to break the ice with uh, some presentation she's done recently. For example, hey, I took a look at it. I, was, I liked it. it. It shared a lot of information for me. Um, it just lets her know that we're doing our homework. We've dug into it. Um, I will let you know everything I'm preparing. It's actually not for me to have a conversation with her, but my customer to have the conversation. So I'm trying to prep them. They know how to talk about their business, uh, but this particular ac activity of researching uh, is a pretty big lift, right? And so I, I make it easier for them to dive straight in. In this case, we're going to be talking about IT related services in particular, uh, network engineering, operations, cybersecurity, software development, that type of world. But you could easily take whatever I'm doing here and apply it to construction or um, you know, finance, whatever the government's buying. It doesn't matter because it's really this video is about showing you how to find information that will help you have a good call and um, have tangible next steps or action items coming out of that call so the call is successful. All right, so I do introduction to talk, or introduction talking points, get that going. And you'll see me do that through this call. I'll try to come back and put some in. Or, or I might just highlight it and say, oh, that's, that's one. And then the purpose of the call, the reason I put that down is at the beginning of the call, I try to sit there and say, hey, Sonia, from my perspective, the purpose of the call is this, this, and this. Uh, does that work for you? Um, and what I'm trying to do is get buy-in from her and acknowledgement that this is where we're going in this call. You know, we're trying to do a, a mutual introduction. And, you know, if she's got certain things that she wants us small businesses to do, 
in order to be you know, viable vendors for her, then we want to hear about that and, and go execute on that and follow back up with her later. So the purpose of the call is just to get us all on the same page. Uh, think about this on any project you do, we're sitting down, there should be a reason for a business meeting, right? What's, what's the purpose? And, um, you know, if you don't lay out the purpose of the meeting, what, no matter what it is, a sales meeting, a business meeting, a project meeting, it doesn't matter. If you don't lay out the purpose, you've just wasted an hour because no one's on the same page. You have to get people on the same page. That's the reason for that purpose. Uh, meeting objectives is really, you know, you can decide whether to share it or not, but most importantly, it's what my team, in this case, my customer and her team, what they're saying to themselves going, look, in order for this to be a really successful call, we want this and this out of this call. Um, so right now there's a, you know, there's always a uh, forecast in there. If we can't find it, that's one of the tactical things. Another one might be a really good introduction. I'll figure out what I want for the meeting objectives, but it's defining how will we measure this call as a success compared to just a really great meeting. Um, a great meeting for me is when everybody likes everybody. We all share a lot of information. We go away and we're like, oh, we should catch up together. And then it's hit or miss on whether we ever do. That's a great meeting, right? We were able to share a lot of information. A successful meeting is one that moves the sale forward. And so you need to have something that says, hey, I just spent 30 minutes in this call and, and an hour or five hours preparing for that call. This is what I got out of it. You know, like Sonia has agreed to introduce us to the director of software development within CECOM, whatever, and we can further the conversation. So she's making that introduction. She's committed to making that introduction. That's a good step forward and that makes the meeting successful. Um, getting specific documentation, anything that, um, if, if you haven't heard this in sales, and I might say this in every video I do or, or many of them, but both people on that call should be giving something, right? And, and, uh, and otherwise the sale's not really moving forward. And so the customer could be giving you stuff such as a document that you couldn't get your hands on. There's a, uh, another customer I was working with, we, we heard about um, a strategic plan that they were referencing in other material but we couldn't find it anywhere on the internet. So anyways, long story short, um, when we made the call into the customer, that was one of our objectives because we wanted to get our hands on that document to learn more about their organization, how to dig further in. Anyways, that's the meeting objectives. And then these initial and additional questions, these all kind of come out of spin selling. It's a methodology of selling that's my favorite. I've been doing selling in various ways for 30 years. And spin selling is my favorite as it relates to small business government contracting or even large business government contracting because spin selling is all about asking the right questions that move the sale forward. Um, spin stands for situational questions, problem questions, implication questions, and needs payoff. And very quickly, situational questions might be something like how many users do you have? How big is your facility? Um, a problem question is, you know, um, are you having servers cut off on you? Is the floor warped? You know, those are problems they're running into that cause dissatisfaction that could lead to a need for your uh, services products as a solution to the problem. Implication is who else besides you is, is being impacted. So say IT has problems with their servers going down. Well, it's not just them. It's not just an IT problem, right? It's a uh, business office problem in HR. They can't get access to their material to be able to do employee reviews or whatever, right? So, so the implication, who else is it impacting? And then the spin or needs payoff is if we solve that problem, uh, how would that improve your life? What's the benefits um, in there? So what's the payoff of addressing that problem? Anyways, so I follow spin selling and in, in first calls like this, these are intro calls. Um, I'm always looking for mostly uh, situational uh, information because this is generally with a small business specialist. The first person is trying to get you in the door. Um, and as I move farther forward, I can learn about some of my customers' problems or my customers' customers' problems before I even talk to them by reading their strategic documents because they might be addressing some of the challenges they faced in previous years that in 2020 or 2021 they want to address. So anyways, um, initial questions are the ones I absolutely will get answered, right? It's, it's mandatory I get these answered. And I tell my customer, look, right at the beginning, um, hey, I wrote down seven questions. I'm hoping throughout this call I get those answered. And then I'll have additional questions that if it's rolling along uh, very well, the meeting's going really well, I'll just insert as many questions as I can. And not in a way that's, in, in this video, by the way, is just about research, so I'm sliding a little bit too much. But um, the additional questions or even the initial questions are not 
um, supposed to be like an inquisition where I'm just like, you know, a detective asks, asking questions or something. No, I'm, I'm integrating them into the conversation. And so you can watch other videos I have that teach you how to do that. But anyways, so this is, this is what I'm trying to prepare is a call plan sheet. And now I'm going into um, how do I do that? I'm going to walk you through it. So I did a little prep work, not much at all, but like five minutes before I started the video, just did a little prep work to make sure I got, you know, these guys' websites. So the Information Systems Engineering Command um, is, uh, is where Sonia is, that she's a small business person there. So I wanted their main website up. I did an um, Army Seacom search. You can see here on Google at the very top, I just searched Army Seacom, and I'll come back and tell you why that's important to me. And then I searched for Sonia uh, Delu DeLuca. I keep saying DeLuca, it might be DeLucia. Uh, and I apologize for butchering the name, but then Army, right? And so I want this person in the army and I'm going to come back and show you like some gold mines I found in just two seconds, which are some of these things. Um, so that's, that's how this video goes is I'm, I'm going to walk you through what I do to, to understand um, how I can best prep my, um, my customer to have this call. So the first thing I'm looking for when I come in, I don't even look at this homepage. I'll come back to the homepage in a minute. What I'm looking at is the capabilities. Um, because I, I have an assumption that this uh, group is the right one, but my customers' core competencies, three of them are network operations, cybersecurity, and software development. So those three worlds. Um, software development pretty much is out for this particular uh, video and this research because that's actually a different part of Army CECOM. Um, it's a whole nother subordinate command, so they're not in there. So here I'm just focused on cybersecurity in network operations, and you can see here, cybersecurity, you know, is my first one. I'm like, all right, a ringer, ringer. Um, cloud, for those of you who don't know, is basically networking, just somebody else owns the servers. And then networking is, uh, you know, the customer owning it. And then some of these other ones, well, we'll go down. In enterprise infrastructure uh, systems, this is huge, right? This is exactly the subordinate command that we're looking for my customer to be able to talk to. And I wanna put this in perspective about, um, how much you need to do your homework so you can find the right place. I'm coming right to a website and you can see, oh, it fits with what Neil's saying. He's saying network operations or cybersecurity, and this says network operations and cybersecurity. Well, this is a subordinate command. And, um, you know, if I just kind of just roll with me, I'll just say it and hopefully it'll keep up with me. But uh, so the subordinates command is called this USA ISEC or however you pronounce it, right? USA ISEC, that's down here. The next level above that is the CECOM command. So that's its parent command. The parent command above that is the Army Contracting Command. The parent command above that is the Army Material Command. And the parent, uh, I mean, the parent command above that one is the Army, right? I'm five levels down or something. I had to go find uh, where, where it's being procured. And there's another one called NETCOM, and we'll cover that in a little bit, that's a um, sibling to this USA ISIC command. Um, or how, again, however you say it, but you have to dig to find these things. And we've been digging. We just happened to set up a meeting and, and we've got to this stage. And so now I'm just telling you, I knew where to go. Um, okay. So here, what I'm looking for is, um, I'm just reading these really quick. If you're not familiar with C5 ISR, it stands for these five C's, right? Command, control, communication, computer, and cyber. And then the intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance is the ISR. Um, so what I'm looking for is anything on here that fits to a question or can help my customer uh, make it clear that they've done their homework. So during the next decade, the Army faces new strategic realities, um, evolving cyber capabilities. This is something I want my customer to pay attention to. Um, provide integrate and sustain readiness, uh, unified land operations. Okay, so I want to grab this one sentence really quick and just copy it because this is something that um, my customer should be saying to the Army customer. Hey, we understand that the Army is facing new strategic realities of irregular warfare um, and blah, blah, blah. And we're positioning ourselves to help you deal with those new strategic realities. Um, and so let me just put this up here. I'm going to have a lot of these little bullets. Let me just put this there. Hey, come on, get back there. I want to maximize my space. Um, Okay, so the next thing, this other stuff is important, but I just bypass it. Now I wanna see what are they saying about cybersecurity, cloud, et cetera. 
you know, what, how do they describe it? I do want to back up one second because I talk about DSBS all the time. Cybersecurity is one word, cybersecurity, or it's hyphenated, cyber-security, or like they have it here, it's two words. Anywhere you go throughout the Army and throughout the DOD and throughout the entire federal government, they'll use one of three <laughs> ways of writing it. Um, the reason I say this is in DSBS and a lot of the federal tools, they don't know how to sit there and resolve one to the other. So cybersecurity as one word would not resolve to cybersecurity as two words. Um, so anytime you put a keyword in, make sure you just throw all three in so you're covering it if cybersecurity is your core competency. Uh, I, I do a whole bunch of sidebars. <laughs> okay, so let's see what they say about cybersecurity. Not a lot, right? Cybersecurity, engineering, um, SCA, V, I don't know what that is off the top of my head. But one thing I think I'm, I'm going to realize right away, cloud migration, I have no idea what these words, these bullets mean. Um, on a website trying to tell us in the industry what's there is not overly helpful. So what I want to do though is I'm not going to bother hitting the, well, let's just hit the rest really quick. So networking, my customer would fit into this. They wouldn't fit into satellite communication, but they would fit into wireless uh, and some of these other ones. Let me look down. Mission command center. So uh, I don't know. I mean, they might fit into that. I, I don't know a lot about that. Um, so not power and grounding, not facilities, but definitely enterprise system integration and management, they would fit. IT system evaluation. Um, I don't think they really fit into the testing side. And there's a whole uh, group that's responsible within CECOM for the testing, but my customer really wouldn't fit there for the evaluation. And then uh, products and services. Well, so this, is, this just kind of controls everything. And these three for sure would fit my customer, but it's kind of generic. So my, one of my first questions I have here is, um, and let me go back and write it with you just uh, as I'm doing it. Okay, so uh, where am I doing? Okay, so questions. So here I'm looking at the core competencies. So what I want to know is, is there a kind of like a strategic, and I know I'm, I'm being redundant here with the question above, but a strategic document that defines in detail what uh, USAICEC core comp competencies, sorry, com, what the heck do I spell? Competencies, um, raw video, right? Um, okay, uh, what core competencies include? We've seen the site, right? We've seen the site. I want to make sure my customer remembers to mention, look, we were looking at your website, but there's barely anything on here, right? And, and you guys can see it with me. There's barely anything on here. So that was a big one for me is, is looking at that. The next thing I want to see here is just, um, is there anything else that this command has on their, their home or their website? So I'm coming over here. Um, here it's just saying what their mission is. Well, that wasn't meant for video, but I don't edit. So Neil Roth, <laughs> excuse me. Um, okay, so I don't see anything else there on those ones. I do see the stuff that's on the generic website. So I'm going to open up the fact sheet separately. And for the fun of it, I'll open up these other ones. I'm a big fan of just opening up the new tabs um, so I can retain my home. And then small business partners. This Facebook site is where they're sending you. I already looked at it. It's, it doesn't impress me. Um, let, let me rephrase that. It doesn't, it's not important to me for this exercise. It's more about information for their, uh, their employees. And then I do want to come back to home. I'm going to look at those pages I just opened, but I'm seeing what else is here. Um, I do want to open up news just to see what are they saying? Don't care about photos, resources I do. And then focus 2020. Um, I've looked at this for something else, but I'll open it anyways, just to see what's there. Um, and then here, so here they call it core capabilities. And um, the other place they called it core competencies. So let's just go back and do that same thing. Um, let me get rid of strategic core comps capabilities. Wanted to keep it on one line if I can. Um, okay, so that's their their stuff there. And I think I've opened up every single thing I could possibly open up related to CCOM. Um, oh, uh, to, um, excuse me, to um, USA ISEC. 
So let's look at the tabs I've opened up just for a second. Here's their fact sheet, I think. And um, so I'm gonna zoom in a lot. So here, uh, this is what was on their homepage, provide engineering and sort of, so this one was important. It, I don't even think this was on their homepage, but this was a big deal. Um, these guys provide the engineering and associated, sorry, uh, at army post camps and stations. That means they're getting to the stage potentially of consolidating all down. If my customer provides IT services that are trying to serve the 100 plus posts that are out there or military bases, then, um, then they really need to get to know this command uh, rather than getting to know those individual posts out there because the buying gets done back here and those guys uh, downstream at the bases and posts just use it. Um, so here's interconnection, extension to deploy. So let me, let me grab this guy. I'm just gonna bring this back to my bullets. Uh, I'm not sure why that's not happening. Give me a bullet. What did I do to lose my bullet? Huh. Um, so let me post that guy. And then there was something else that I saw here. Um, th they also provide subject matter expertise to PEOs. And that's uh, really important to me. If you don't know about PEOs, you need to know about them, especially as it relates to uh, you know, the military. Program executive offices, um, they're all over. And DOD and every service in DOD and um, and they're, they'll be major customers of yours. So let me just grab that guy. I'm going to put it here along with the other one. Okay. So empowers the Army to succeed now and in the future by embodying the Army's priorities and readiness. So that stuff is important later on when we're writing responses. But right now, I'm just trying to find question stuff. So integrates strategic communication, supports soldier readiness, engineers, IT solutions and coordinates with the U.S. Army Material Command, PEOs, and so kind of what they just said above. Oh, that's what ISAC is. Got it. Um, okay, so information systems engineering based in blah, blah, blah. Okay, when I say blah, 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 I mean, okay, let me move on. Uh, it's all good stuff. It's just whether I can use it. So now here's a gold mine thing that I did not see on their homepage. Um, and let me just show you what I'm looking at. Here are the USA... ISEC directorates. So in this command, USAISEC, um, they have subordinate commands called directorates, and I want to come back and talk about these. But over here, I'm like, uh, I do not see how I can find out what their commands are, right? Um, like there's nothing, nothing that's popping up. But if I hadn't hit the fact sheet, I wouldn't have known that. So um, here, I'm going to learn about these fact sheets really quick. I mean, uh, excuse me, directorates. So Inside of here, it's, you're not always going to fit. And what you really want to do is make sure you don't go in saying, oh, we can help out every director or every commander, or whatever. You don't want to do that. You want to be able to communicate that you did your homework. And by doing our homework of the USA ISEC directorates, uh, and there's one, two, three, four, five, five of them, we, we can support blah, blah, blah. So let's see if we can support all five or some. So um, designs, develops, and deploys IT telecommunication infrastructure. Engineering capabilities. So we definitely do number one. Um, transmission systems directorate. In transmission systems and wide area networks. Um, I'm going to say for my customer, even though they do network engineering, there's a difference between LAN network engineering and WAN. When, uh, for those of you who don't know, LAN is basically inside of a campus and WAN is when you go outside of a campus. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you're trying to go across... Um, across the state or state to state or country to country, um, that's when you're going wide WAN area networks. Okay, so I'm gonna leave them out of this though, because uh, you only want it, you, can, you only have the bandwidth, uh, the, the time to go into a couple of directors. So we want that one. And then mission engineering, operate the engineering evaluation facility that performs compliance testing in coordination with industry for device seeking approval for DOD. Um, okay, so these guys are testing industry devices that want to uh, be in DOD. That's not my customer. So not the second one, not the third directorate. Uh, Fort Detrick's engineering directorate delivers IT planning, implementation of enterprise-wide and local IT solutions. I'm done looking at it, that's a winner. So it makes sense, right? Engineering directorate, and then I get down here to this one, uh, which is very similar. Let's look at the national capital. Um, provides system engineering services to DOD organizations, 
within the National Capital Region, also delivers IT engineering services in three combatant command areas of responsibility, um, AFRICOM. So this one here, I would even say it's, it's a hit or miss because uh, what the way I'm reading is basically they support the National Capital Area, Washington, DC, but they also support these major commands. And like this one here is Africa, this one's Europe, um, and this one is something else, Indo-Pacific. Um, so these, uh, these might get into OCONUS or outside continental United States. And I tell my customer, look, there's billions right here on the, on the States. Don't really focus external now. Get to like 50 million then start expanding or something. Um, because it's so much easier when you stay uh, tight to your core. So just looking at these, what I'm going to recommend, and I'm going to write this down now, is looking at your stuff, we, we feel like we fit with uh, these two. So let me, let me just pull my guy up again. Um, this time I need them both open. So first off, I, I want to grab this fact sheet. I grabbed that hyperlink. I don't know if you saw. I just control A, control C. And then over here, I'm going to put in a question that says, um, looking at your fact sheet, cheat comma, we appear to fit with, um, with the FHED and FDED directorates, directorates, um, uh, directorates, um, you know, I think what I'm going to write is, uh, can we explore that? Okay. So hopefully you see my face and I'm like pausing for a second and you see my typing, but I'm trying to figure out the question and, and the meeting's not till later in the week. So I'll refine my questions, but basically I'm looking at your fact sheet and remember over here on this fact sheet. Oh, let, hold on a second. Let me put this before I forget. Um, link control B. Okay. So looking at your fact sheet, we appear to fit within the, these two directorates. Can we explore them? Um, I'll refine that because that's kind of a, a soft way of asking it. But basically, I want to. Um, I also want to help my customer be able to say, I have no idea how to even say this. Uh, this fork, and uh, it's not embarrassing because there's just too many things for me to know. But um, I can find that out beforehand, so we're able to communicate that clearly. I can call somebody. I can uh, go on Google, and they probably have a way to pronounce it. So, um, anyways, but you see what I just did. Let me come back to this fit to a page. Um, this is a fact sheet, a two-page fact sheet in many, many directorates, excuse me, uh, commands throughout the Army, DOD, and even throughout the federal government. They have these fact sheets, and they're designed to put information out about their organization, so you can do your homework and research. You want to be able to reference, and I want my customers to reference this in their call. Um, that way, the the, uh, the government knows that they've done their homework, and they're like, all right. Um, okay, so I don't need... This guy, well, I do need them in a minute because I want to research. I went to the homepage here and I couldn't find them, but they're listed here. So I'm going to type those in in a minute and see if I can find them. Uh, let's look here. Here's some, I'm just looking. So this is the contact information. It's no good to me. It's basically just sending in a blind email. So here is the history. I don't really care about the history for the calls, but I'm just seeing if there's anything in the history that is important to what we're doing. And no, because it's 1996, that's like 50 years ago. I'm going to bypass it. Um, so here is the small business link that I clicked. But when I look at the URL, I'm looking at Aberdeen Proving Grounds uh, Office of Small Business um, Programs, which I think it's funny. I think I skipped one because it's, it's uh, you know, the people I'm talking to, CECOM, then Aberdeen Proving Grounds, then ACC, then AMC, then the Army, right? So I'm like six levels down. And uh, this Aberdeen Proving Ground, while it's great, it has nothing to do with the people I'm calling, so I just get rid of it. I actually used this whole site for a different call when, I when we were talking to people at Aberdeen Proving Ground, but um, for me, I don't need it, so I'm gonna move forward. I was hoping to see something related specifically to USA ISEC command that, um, that's over here on that home tab. Okay, um, so this one, what did I click on here? Just coming back. Uh, small business. Oh, okay. This is where I started clicking on news and resources. So let's click here. This is their news page. And it's funny. I'm sorry. You probably saw this before me, but right there it says news. 
Um, so Mr. and Mrs. Smith go to Washington. I'm looking for when this article was four months ago and top civilian says farewell. So this lady uh, took off. I actually happened to read this article before, but let me read this one. Mr. and Miss. Do they actually have a, like a, so here um, I'm just reading, like, I don't really care about going to Washington. What I'm looking for is, are there any gems that could be helpful in the conversation? Um, assistance coordinating higher headquarters. So here they talk about the higher headquarters for USA ISEC is CECOM um, and their G6, which is the head of IT. So this is just, looks like they're just sending them to training. One of the reasons I really like these going into these though, is because you never know what you're gonna find. Over here is related stories. Um, and it takes me two seconds to just browse to go, are any of them really fitting for my preparation? One of the things you have to be careful when you're doing this prep type work is the rabbit hole. Right? We can all go down a rabbit hole and then keep chasing it to wherever it goes. I'm just trying to prepare for this call with Sonia as it relates to USA, ISEC, and NETCOM if I see that. So because these are related, I'm going to look really quick and I'm browsing them really, really fast on the right here. Cutting edge model. None of it really fits for what I need. So I'm just going to bypass it. Um, okay, so I clicked on, what did I click on? Uh, USA, ISEC. Must be resources I clicked on, page under construction. So uh, that's too bad. And there's nothing else that I can click on. So I'm gonna close that, which is fine. And then the Focus 2020, if you remember that, that was over here. Was, I'm going back and forth on the video on the homepage. But so this Focus 2020, um, I've already looked at it before, but I can't remember it related to this, this particular call I'm trying to do. But this is at the higher command CECOM, um, Communications Electronic Command. Uh, so I'm going to come down really quick. I don't, a lot of this stuff is not, when I talk to CECOM, I want to know this, but when I'm talking down below, I don't really need to know it. Here's their priorities for FY 2020. I do care about this. Um, so let me see how I can do this really quick. Um, it's funny. I'm trying to highlight it, but it's, <laughs> I don't think I'm doing it right. Uh, let me try to go up. Oh, it dies at that point. Okay. I see. Um, and, and again, this is what I mean by raw video, right? You get to you get to see me do this stuff raw. Come on. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that whole thing for a second um, and go back all the way up to the top here. This is important, um, and I'll, I'll talk about it in a second of why. Um, CECOM 2020 priorities, I'm gonna tab in, paste, and we'll see what we got. Okay, there you go, perfect. So um, I'll read it here where we can read it together. Okay, CECOM priorities. The reason I'm reading this is this command is the higher command of USA ISIC who I'm calling or we're calling. I wanna know, do any of these priorities tie into them and is there a question I can ask because it'll be important for us to establish our relationship with these people that we're, we're thinking about their higher commands priorities as it relates to them um, and we know that we need to help USA, ISIC, you know, meet the priorities, uh, et cetera. So, okay, let's read these really quick. So fleet readiness, um, ship apart when it's requisitioned. Oh, there you go. Um, discover software vulnerabilities and patch now, not weeks later. This stuff is awesome. Uh, let, let me just say what it is because some of you know exactly what you're reading and some of you, this might be kind of new. So I'll just talk about it as if you don't know it, which is fine. So here they're saying ship apart when it's requisitioned. So what they mean is, if I need a new hard drive for my computer, when the request comes in, ship it. Don't put it on back order and try to find it. So they really want to make sure that the people downstream, the people who are doing the mission of the army, um, have what they need when they need it, and they don't get put on back order. The next one, software vulnerabilities, they're saying when a software, uh, when, when there's risk to software and they see the vulnerability, patch it now. Often what happens is you might find it, identify it, record it, and then patch it here. They're saying weeks later, sometimes it's months or years later. So this part's good. And the reason I'm saying it's good, especially as, as it relates to my customer is they want to talk about their experience, helping um, other customers achieve that immediacy sense of immediacy with what they need to do or urgency. So for example, they could talk about how they've managed change control in another environment um, and how they've done things immediately, like uh, how they put in processes, to patch now and not weeks later. 
um, if they know that this is a priority, then they know they should be calling this up as some of their examples of how great my customer is. They should be calling this up because then the government buyer might tie together the stories my customer is telling about their experience to the mission priorities of CECOM. I hope that makes sense. Um, sustain resilience, interoperable, inter interoperable systems for all these guys. Send experts where and when needed. Um, okay, so this one, this does fit in well. So I do want my customer to understand it. Future forces, overmatched adversaries. I love this one. I always believe in a uh, fair fight should only happen inside of a boxing ring. Everywhere else, it should be overwhelming. Um, and that's pretty much the, you know, the army way. Uh, figure out how to sustain new systems and ensure they're safe and save money by buying more good stuff. Uh, adapt the way we work and make rapid changes to provide better services, this process improvement, et cetera. Make sure we can communicate on the battlefield, work with Futures Command to ensure soldiers have the right. So the Futures Command is trying to um, be rapidly improving the military. That, that's all good, but there's nothing, uh, um, you know, these two could be big ones for my customer or good ones for my customer. Okay, and the people always trained, agile, and cared for. This is where they're talking about their own workforce. And my customer doesn't really focus on training necessarily at the moment, so I don't have to worry about that. But I do have it there. And what I want to know is, um, uh, so let me bring a question up here. You know, are there uh, matching priorities for USA ISIC to the CECOM uh, FY 2020? I go too far 2020 um, priorities right and so I need to be able to give my customer a reference so I'm going to grab this link put it here let's just link it there link okay. Okay, um, so are the matching priorities for the USA ISIC? We've got those down, and uh, so that's a good question. I want, I'm trying to dig in, right? I need to know what the challenges are. A lot of times we, we might hit a small business office and if we don't give them specific things to help us with, they'll, um, they'll not really know where to take us. So again, I'm coming back, we're reviewing this one document that we found. Uh, this is part of what I was talking about, right? There's the Army Material Command, and then um, communication electronics. So uh, CECOM fits together. It's kind of under Army Material Command as a, a direct higher command, but it also is under Aberdeen Proving Ground, which is ACC. Um, but here you can see the six, so there's Aberdeen Proving, or uh, Army Contracting Command, Aberdeen Proving Ground over here. But these five are the ones we're looking at. And so um, the Information Systems Engineering Command is just one of the CECOMs. My customer actually has meetings with other folks out there, but they're really trying to prepare on this. And so understanding how all this fits together is really important. Hardware and software critical components. Um, this stuff's all good, but uh, so this one's really interesting. Let me just show you. Here it's the different commands. And if you watch as I scroll down, I'm able to quickly analyze this document and go, okay, this first section, they're talking about uh, what's being done over at Tobihana Army Depot. And then as we come down, the next one is the integrated logistics. So um, I know that I'm going to get to the end of this document. Here's the, uh, uh, where's the next one? Software engineering. And then here's critical network uh, connectivity. And I think that was the top one. And then here. Um, okay, so these two kind of go together. Let me read this now for a second. So I'm in the second paragraph at home or in the field, whether it's the sergeant Skyping, data network connectivity, Upgrades, so they're just talking about what they do and that's fine. I don't need any of that because there's so much more description other places. And then here they're just talking about how ACC is a partner. So I'm gonna move past that. Um, and then here's their world-class talent. One of the things that I was recommending to my customer, and they don't need to uh, worry about it here for this call, but when you see um, documents or images like this, graphs like this, I always tell people to try to match what you see here to how you describe your own team within your company uh, because it, then it begins to fit you know, you're speaking their language and your language and you're helping them speak your language. Um, here's their path forward. I'm not really tracking on that because that's, that's on product and purchasing. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that document's fine. I already took a link and I don't need to look at it again. Um, let me come back. That was cloud, Sonia. Okay, 
I think, okay, so I, before I go to these guys again, because I do want to go to these, let me open up another Google Sheet here. Um, remember, uh, let's put this guy here. Remember, I want to find this guy. And this is where I have fun. And so if you're hanging out in the video and you get to this stage, this is where I have fun because my competitors will stop when they get to this point here. They'll look in here, but they won't see something, right? So they won't move forward. Maybe resources might've had something about it, but that page is down. So here we're just gonna go in and see if we can find anything. Basically what I'm looking for is something that leads me to one of their pages. Um, now, I wanna come here, this is a military one. So um, I'm gonna go here to advanced search and say that I just want it to be uh, dot mil. So I'm only finding military results. <laughs> so there's not a lot here. And this is 1988. So there's not a lot at all that I can find. Um, the only, so this is good though. It, uh, if, it would have been great if I had found some information, but it's also good that I didn't. Hey, we went in looking for information on this and I could not find anything out there. Um, I'm going to try to switch this over and say, show me anything from anywhere within the last year. Uh, I must have missed something here. Hold on one second. Make sure I cleared my things. I should be having a lot more results than that. Wow. Even that's like uh, nothing. Um, we'll come back to that in a second, but uh, let me say any time. Man, that's amazing. Um, okay, so let me, uh, uh, where's that one? I just opened this guy. They were doing some sort of show, showcase. VR technology. So this is really old. Well, March 2019, it's not that old. Um, okay, so I'm going to be looking down here for our friends. So it got really old for me and I just moved past that. Um, this one here, I'm just looking. Uh, here's something that talks about these guys won two contracts. So I'll open up that to see. Uh, they're hiring people. $6 million task order. That's 2015. So this one here was 2015 as well. So that's really not that helpful. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything. What was the other command I had? Um, these guys, Fort Detrick. Let's try that one more time. And then if I don't see anything, that's okay. Because, excuse me, it lets me, um, yeah, because I'm busy. <laughs> that's funny. I'm moving so fast that Google just cut me off for looking at stuff. Um, they said it was unusual tra traffic. That's, that is pretty funny for me. Okay, so let's look at something in the past year because anything beyond that's not really helpful to me. Um, here's clear jobs. By the way, this is something really helpful. This one's, um, let me click on this. I want to show you this, how I use some other stuff. Abbreviations, what does that stand for? The history, defense logistics agency. I'm going to scroll really fast, see what I can find here. Um, okay, so I might try one more just for the fun of it. USA, I, SEC organization chart. Uh, let's try that. There's CECOM. I already had CECOMs. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute. Let me put a quotation around this because it's cutting it off. Okay. Looks like there's a lot of images for their people. Some of this stuff is uh, old, some of it's new. Okay, so uh, sorry I went quiet there for a minute as I'm reading, but you know that's the whole purpose, right? That's what I'm trying to show you is I'm just cruising through. So let me show you something here that I do when I look at, okay, so this is SAIC. And the reason this is good is because 
Um, these guys, so the career opportunity for USAI SIC at Dietrich, um, information technology, military construction, I'm not quite sure what that is, but they're looking for, uh, so here they're, they're providing, man, that was a long description there, sorry. A long description to get all the way to here, um, blah, 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 let me see what they're doing. Technical reviews. Um, okay, here you go. So they're looking for information technology technicians, um, information systems engineers, project directors. So from my perspective, what uh, one thing that um, one thing that my customer might do is is reach out and say, you know, hey, do you have a point of contact at SAIC? And let me just put that down. Um, SAIC seems to uh, have a large presence, and I'll come back and write this better. But um, do you have a POC for for them? Um, generally, what I look for is, do you have a program manager, the phone number, et cetera, that I can reach out to and learn a lot more information? So, um, okay, so here's a lot of org charts as it relates to material command. Your C come, I'm not really looking for that. Um, ACC organizational structure, I'm not looking for. I'm looking for um, charts, NATO. Okay, so I, I don't spend a lot of time. This is something that's really important to remember is there's a limit on how much time you spend uh, reviewing data so you don't waste your time. So here I'm looking at uh, some document that they're putting out, U.S. Army Information Systems Engineering Command. So this comes back to our ISIC, uh, but what are they sharing? So provide, it's telling us what they do. That's great. You're going to give us some great bit of information here. Um, Team Isaac, it's like there's some sort of a, well, I don't know what this is, so I'm gonna keep reading for a second. Um, looking down, thank you, somebody. These are the interns, digital system training, seems like those people are nice. So here's a magazine, uh, which, no, I guess it's a flyer on trying to um, do sexual harassment prevention training um so this this looks like a like some sort of ccom online uh uh bulletin board type thing just kind of interesting i've never seen one just sitting out there and so one of these it's fun to just kind of cruise through and see what you see um there's another one it's magazines engineer flow October. Okay. So it's cool stuff, but it's just too, like none of it really seems related yet. So I'm just going to keep on moving. Um, all right. So I'm going to pause on this guy. This is one of the last documents that I clicked on. Apparently meet personnel from the U S army, uh, center of excellence for intelligence and netcom. When was this? Uh, all in three days. Can't remember when this was. Well, there you go. It's coming up. Um, Okay, so these are industry days. This is important, right? Is uh, what, what we want to be able to say to our customers, so this is a little good find, is that we want to be able to say, hey, we were looking at this industry day. We heard about it. Because you know this, on their homepage, right? I didn't see anything about an industry day or events or any of that stuff. But here, um, this industry day, and let's take a look at it. It's for uh, ISEC, right? I'm going to scroll down, innovate, uh, exhibitor registration, Government and industry to collaborate on mission requirements and technology. It's a free event. Uh, provides opportunities to see the latest emerging technologies. Network with industry experts. Showcase your solutions. Uh, so this is awesome. Looks um, looks fairly big. Like there's a picture of the size. It, it actually looks uh, fairly big to grab people in there, but it also seems small enough to uh, uh, you know stand out among your. You know you're not going to have thousands of people. So here's uh, strategic partners. Let's go back up. Look, this thing's um, a pretty cool little thing for me. Uh, government and military, why attend? Um, these are just other people I know what's for, but let's see what they say for these, for the government. So the in innovation day will take place at Thunder Mountain Activity Center. So it looks like it's on base. Um, Showcase an opportunity for the organizations and unit structures under the Army Garrison and ISEC and other tenant units to see the latest emerging. Um, senior leadership tour. 
uh, open all personnel to come out. So what they're doing is letting uh, senior leadership come in for a half hour and then everybody comes in. Open all personnel and locate right on your installation. This seems like it's one that my customer should be thinking about if they want to get out there. Let's see, um, what's it cost, right? Uh, why attend? Oh, maybe all this is, uh, maybe it's all the same. Um, so let's see about this. How much, how much are you gonna cost us? Um, event category, what do you mean event category? It's this event. Oh, that's interesting. So we're gonna come back to this in one second, but where is that guy? Here it is. Whoa, okay, so it's 1200 bucks. Um, one table, two tables, three tables. So it's February 25th and um, it's 1299 bucks, right? So this is something, actually I'm just gonna mention to my customer that they should think about, because this, this, um, this organization is one that they should be building a long-term relationship with. Um, and I'll mention that to them. But you see, like, we're trying to do homework and get out there and get into this customer. This event though, if you're able to get on site and build any kind of relationships that start moving you forward. And, and one thing to keep in mind is I always say like this type of homework I'm doing, it generally is for customers that are already making revenue. If you're not making revenue, go team up with somebody, get your subcontracting revenue coming in so you can pay to be able to afford to go to this. You know, the customer I'm working with, um, you know, it's, they're doing fine. And so this is extra stuff. I did want to pop over really quick. Just look at speaking opportunities. Um, so I'm not quite sure. Um, this is interesting. I'll come back to them. I don't want to get distracted. Sorry. So, okay. So this was really cool. And then here's some other events. Are these related to, uh, so they're doing a couple others. I don't know what this guy is. Um, Let's take a look at them. So this is just Air Force Base stuff. So the chances of somebody else getting over there. So these, this is just these guys' events. Um, I'm gonna get rid of these, so I don't need those. Okay, so um, I'm done with this. I've, I've done as much research as I can on those two websites. I wanna show you the last two things I did. And I think I'm gonna wrap this up because I got a lot of information I can ask questions about. But I did two searches, right? One was Army CENTCOM because I just wanna see what was there. And I'm not going to go too far into this uh, at the moment. You do this on your own. But I go through these and I see things like this um, strategic support area. And they're talking about something. I'm like, well, let me click on it and see, uh, see what's there, et cetera, because it allows me to do research. An example is, excuse me, if I click on this, it's, a, it's an article. And I can begin to see stuff in here. And I can begin to see, first of all, I can just begin to get an understanding of who people are. Like this is the AMC commander. Over here, this is um, general in charge of CECOM. So he's the CECOM commander on the right. And I can see some of the priority that they're talking about. Um, I've read these articles. I encourage you to read them. Don't get sucked in, but if they fit into where you're trying to go. Um, but I wanna pause and come back to this. I was searching CECOM, but if we just also do one AISEC like that and see if there's some similar stuff. So this guy is assuming command. Um, which is good for us to just know. Nukes Command Sergeant Major, uh, maintaining hotline, denim day, um, change of command. If you've never seen change of command, those are fun. Uh, they're boring to be in <laughs> if you have to stand at attention the whole time, but they're, uh, they're really important and they're fun. Um, IT technologies specialist. So again, something like this, if I see this, I'm gonna click on that really quick. Um, Here's, oh, here's, here's a different cybersecurity. Let's take a look at that. Military, government, projects. Um, let me just pause, because I don't want to go too far and become like this expert at like reading everything, but I wanted to come to USA Jobs. This is a, a government job that they're offering out. And um, let's see if it's the title. So information technology specialist. So for my customer, that would fit into a role that they want to do. Network services, network operations, remember. And this is the job, information technology specialist. So the reason this is important is coming down and seeing the role. 
right to provide skills, not readily available, but critical to the military operation. Um, okay, so here's the responsibilities. Uh, site surveys, analyze customer requirements, analyze telecommunication. Okay, so I don't wanna go too far into that, but the reason I point this out to you is this is a great place when you're writing a little bit about who you are, um, especially when you get into telling stories about your uh, organization, um, often we forget or we're not that good at communicating how good we are. Well, just take a look at some of their write-ups and you begin to go, yeah, we do that. Yep, we do that. And you know, you don't need to plagiarize and take the whole thing word for word, but you can look at that and go, oh yeah, we do develop these plans to fulfill customer requirements, whatever. Um, so don't forget about using USA job type places to get a little reminder on that. Um, okay, so here's the other event prevents or presents a uh, technology cyber security day. Just looking at this really quick. Um, so here it was, well, they're just saying it's the home of these guys. Um, 5,000 civilians, JITIC, USAI SIC. Um, okay, so attendees, here's who attended it. Uh, NETCOM's mission is to install and blah, 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 which is really important later. Um, okay. So um, this was an event that happened. Uh, the reason I'm going to keep it up and I'll go back later, I'll have to do it with you on this video, but I'm going to go see if I can find the slides or any kind of briefing decks that came out of this event. Um, did anybody from the military present? If they did, it's, it's kind of a goldmine for me uh, on those. So I can, you know, I would look for like cybersecurity day and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, Ortiz. So here I'm just looking at uh, Colonel Ortiz assumes command. Um, so I must have misunderstood it because I thought it was a major general. Oh, oh, oh. So he's the CENCOM, CECOM commander as a general and ISIC uh, for the subordinate command as a colonel. So, okay. Um, this person's receiving it. Uh, Ortiz resumes it, accepted the colors in his remarks. So in his remarks, Kilgo, who's the commander of CECOM, challenged the command to continue to do great things. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I challenge you to continue the work. Leadership's absolutely about the individual, um, whatever. Uh, so th this is all nice, but it's, it has nothing to do with prepping for my meeting. And then, okay, so let me come over here. So I did that. You saw how I did some of this research and I just changed it. Um, let me come here. Then I'm, we're meeting with this person, Sonia, and, and keeping in mind, you're, you know, you're going through this process of looking at this. Um, uh, so Sonia, I just found all this stuff and, and I'm not gonna go through all of it with you, but I opened up two and one was just an absolute gold mine, but this other one, um, so here, this one's just an article out of some Herald review, uh, I'm assuming it's a local newspaper kind of thing, but they talk about annual procurement events, sees good turnout, bringing the government together. And this guy here is uh, the commander, I think he's the commander of NETCOM, which I was saying USA ISIC and NETCOM are, are joined together um, out there in Arizona and, and my customer wants to get there. So here uh, they talk about certain things. So first thing I noticed is the second day of two day government thing saw uh, multiple presenters speaking. Okay. So where are the decks? I'm going to go find the decks for my customers. So, you know, I'll, I'll look up Timothy Norton. I might reach out and make a quick phone call to the PAO or somebody say, Hey, can we get a copy of the decks? Um, the idea is to get the information they're putting out there. So uh, this, here's another one. Decision makers benefit Sierra Vista. Sheila Martin, vice president of uh, some diversity center, hosted the event. Okay. Said 2019 was the most successful yet. Um, a lot of people there. That's great. Uh, we have been delighted in the response. We have small business tents in. So they're just talking about how great it is. Some speakers traveled as far away as this, where they joined prime contractors. Um, so here they're letting us know other prime contractors. Um, Alan Maxwell, CIO based tech services. Uh, so as well as presentations from the leadership. Okay, then where are they? I want to go find them. Um, this is really important. This jumps you ahead of your competitors when you're having phone calls is if you can see what they're saying, it's as if you just went to that event, but you didn't have to pay in time or money. Um, but you understand their priorities, the challenges they're stating they're wanting to address, and they're looking for industry to help you can get that if you just take the time to get those decks. Uh, many speakers highlighted their interest in working with small business and many of us smalls want to work with you. Um, th this thing here, just as a side note, even though there's a federal mandate that a certain amount of contracts 
go to companies, it ain't happening. They're only going to go to you if you can help them with their mission. Um, forget about the whole set aside stuff. Yeah, that's a, a part of it, but it's about the mission. Um, can you help them with the mission? Um, second day featured speakers again. So of course, everybody's saying their importance. I'm sorry, I'm just rambling. Okay, so here, uh, Deborah Parr kicked off the presentations, uh, diverse range of contracts. I mean, this stuff's awesome. 290 uh, netcom contracts, she said. Base operations, test and evaluation. This is perfect. It's exactly the stuff we're looking for. I'll reach out. Um, so I'm going to take this article and just make sure I don't lose it. Um, here. Um, I want to come back and get that information. I'll reach out to her office. Uh, the office was proponent of small business. Okay, so we're cruising along. I'm just looking. Anything else? You see what I'm doing here, though, right? I'm cruising down and seeing what's there. Um, here, the, the post commanding general uh, talked about stuff. I'm less concerned about the post commander because they've got such a big world to deal with. You're really looking for subordinate commands or major commands on that post compared to the post commander. Um, uh, uh, I'd like to build a platform. Okay, so a lot of good stuff. All I did, by the way, I didn't find this on any, any Army site, right? It's the Har Herald Review. It's some uh, media newspaper, et cetera, that was out there doing, uh, tracking this event. And so by me doing a little research, chasing down uh, my point of contact's name and finding related information, I'm able to see it. Uh, so here's the gold mine one I was saying. This one's old. It's like two years old. No big deal. It's a year and a half old. Um, it's 104 pages, but this one here laid out just so much information about the Army's tactical cloud um, direction, et cetera. And so I, uh, I'm going to go through pretty fast with you, but I just want you to uh, kind of see as I'm going through the things I'm able to see. For example, here, they talk about the path forward. And if you're in IT, network engineering, et cetera, you look at this and you go, where do I fit in? Um, where are these future states as they move forward? And how can I be part of that? When you're talking to large primes, they want to know that you understand this um, this way of thinking. It's not just about, can you fix a, a, a user's desktop? Can you fix a server? Can you get the LAN up and running? You know, can you build new software? It's not about that. Can you understand where that all fits into helping the army accomplish their mission? And, and that's what we do. So here, um, here you're able to see about the major lines of effort. You can have a conversation with your points of contact. And in particular, my customer can, when they talk about, um, uh, you know, where they might fit uh, in there. So coming down again, uh, here is the overall cloud effort, and they're talking about DOD. <laughs> there's so much, there's so much in here, um, but it's awesome to see. Um, but one of the things that's really helpful for my customers, they continue to build their footprint within the Army, trying to get their solid uh, um, past performances in there, and where could they work? CECOM, uh, USA, ISEC, NETCOM is where I'm talking about, but here PEO, EIS for Army Enterprise, Army Tactical um, is a little more uh, out there. Um, but I just look at this from this one slide and I'm, and I'm looking at it and saying, okay, if you're in this space, IT, you would understand it. If I was doing construction, it's the same thing. I would be seeing what is the Army doing uh, to manage their uh, real estate? You know, how are they handling their facilities? What about the aging? What about the, um, you know, trying to turn their buildings more green? Whatever it is, reducing the cost of the real estate footprint. You, you can find that through these decks that are out there. And that's what I'm trying to do in preparation of the call. And I will tell you, a lot of this leads to trying to make the best impression possible for Sonia uh, when we talk to her that, hey, we did our homework. We're um, a company you should refer in further to the buying offices because we won't embarrass you. You know, we're a company that prepares for the meetings. We come in and talk about their tactical needs and their um, challenges, et cetera. So, okay. Um, are you sure that this is how we get the data into the cloud? <laughs> Yeah, it looks about right to me. So, um, I mean, this, this stuff is phenomenal for uh, my customers. So uh, I'm coming down, distributed mission command. Um, some of the stuff they're talking about, look at this. I'm able to look at Eric Hansen, PEO. So if, if they want to move forward and look at more stuff, uh, my customer can look at this group, try to set up a phone call with them. Um, I'm going to keep coming down here. Um, you can see by the agenda, the next few slides are just going to be uh, educating my customer on the army's future for uh, the network and none of these slides are really that old i mean they're a year and a half old but um, it takes time to roll things up so here you're just seeing they're talking about the ge geographical 
um, layout of the military. If you don't understand your customer, for example, I always tell people, you can't possibly go after DHS and the army at the same time. If you're a small business under 20 million, right? You should be going after army or, you know, just DHS. DHS has got so many components to understand them fully takes a lot of effort. But once you're in, you're in and you can really grow that presence. Um, like here, here's the uh, United States Special Operations Command. I'm about to drop another video on Army, uh, the Army Special Operations Command, um, so you understand their mission and what they're trying to do. All of this fits together. So let's keep coming down. I wanna show you some other things that, um, as I'm just looking at this for my own customers. This one's really uh, colorful. The next few slides really talk about how the, the Army is organized. Um, so I worked my way up, I don't know if you ever looked at my bio, but I worked my way up from a team where I was on a machine gun. Um, and I think there's another picture a little farther down, like here. Uh, so, so this one, like this, you see the soldier, right? That was me. And then I was on a team. I was on a machine gun team in the Rangers and we were in a weapons squad and we were in a, uh, you know, um, I think it was like first platoon, something like that. First platoon, second platoon in Charlie company and second battalion. And that's pretty much where it ends because it's 75th Rangers. But um, but then I went to work for uh, 9th Infantry Division, and then I worked for the uh, Corps Commander. If you understand how your customers organize, you begin to understand where you fit in. Um, one of the things I heard from somebody in DOD, and it was relating to how they support the, the President of the United States and all that kind of stuff, and they were saying, you need to operate with a sense of urgency with who your customer is. And um, you know, when you think about the Army, the people downstream, that's the soldier, the person at the very bottom, the person at the very bottom is the one out accomplishing the mission. And the higher up you go, the more planning we are. But we all are supporting that soldier in the field. And from the Army's perspective or any other customer, you know, whether it's like a, um, you know, IRS, and they got an auditor or whatever, whatever it is, it's that person in the field, the FBI agent investigating a bank robbery. It's the person in the field we're trying to support. And by looking at this and understanding it, you can figure it out. So I digress again. Um, I'm coming down here looking for stuff that fits to my customers. So this one here, this is important for them to understand, but it's starting to get a little overwhelming. My customer currently does do field stuff. So that's where they have a distinguish, uh, where they distinguish their difference. They focus more on garrison. Um, so back on the bases. And so these, this, a lot of this stuff I'm going to go through really fast. Okay. So here they're talking about the network. Um, so, uh, this is important, but this is less important on the sales side, more important on the, uh, um, you know, the people who are on my customer's team doing the work. Let me just keep coming through questions. That was really deep, that one. Mission command and common operating environments. Um, uh, so this stuff here, let's see if this could be valuable. So operational overview, let's come down here. Uh, Knowledge-based decision-making. Okay, their command. The related tasks and systems enable a commander to balance the art of command and the science control. This stuff gets uh, pretty deep for just a, <laughs> this video. Um, it's really important you begin to become uh, knowledgeable about this stuff. But um, here they're just talking about an operational view. And it's, you know, it's in one more side note. But when I got out of the Army back in 96, 97, 97, um, this is the first uh, government contracting work I was doing. It's this kind of vision. It was called Army After Next. But you know, this is the future now. Where do you fit in? And being able to help the, um, the buyers understand where you fit in is really important. It also helps you understand um, where to go search for opportunities. Okay, so blah, blah, blah. This stuff is really good, but it's too deep again right now. This one here is a really important one though. Uh, for my customer, they'll fit in. I'm just trying to figure out where the questions could be and I don't see it yet. So I know I'm rambling a little bit, but again, Neil Raw. Um, Okay, so here they're just talking about their, their stuff again. Okay, so let's chief, uh, chief of staff of the Army's principles and characteristics. So this is what I meant by um, the Army and lethality. The Army must fight and win wars against the adversaries. That's what they do. That's their job. Um, the Army, and so here we get into, as it relates to the network, right? The, the Army network must enable something. Um, So, I mean, this stuff's great, but it's really, it gets into more of your response um, than questions. Let me come down. I'm going to send this uh, document. Let me grab it if, um, if I haven't done it already. I want to make sure they have that because it's very good research if they start uh, pursuing more and more of the Army. Okay, so here they're talking about, this is what I like, right? So here, 
this is a really important slide. They're talking about what it looks like back in 2018. This is where it should have been uh, in FY19 through the next two years, right? 2020 and 2021. And now looking at where they are as they're going out. The reason this is important to my customer, and I want to make sure they have it, is they should be using similar type terms. You know, I was looking at, what should they call it, right? Um, I was looking at the mission command post computing environment, blah, 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 whatever. And they were talking about the cloud environment of the future. And we'd like to, you know, get an introduction and expand who we're talking to, what we're talking about. But look at, this stuff is exactly what you need. It's, it's understanding the direction they're trying to go. They want to reduce the amount of data and sources, um, synchronization with enterprise services, so my customers should be coming in saying, what experience do we have at synchronizing, uh, synchronization of data, et cetera? Uh, let's keep coming down. Operational challenges, which is something else I was talking about. Um, so I'm not an expert at this IT stuff, right? But this particular stuff now. But what does it mean to the agility to shoot, move, and communicate? But they're, they're describing a challenge there. Um, commanders are faced with data overload. Um, Okay, so this is really important to see themselves, see the enemy and see their battle space. Um, so obviously a lot of this has to do with down, down range where they're actually out there um, doing the mission, but this fits right in with just an over, let me just talk about this, right? This commanders are faced with data overload. So I wanna be helping my customer highlight their ability to manage da uh, data, especially when it comes to data analytics, business intelligence, they call it getting the right information to the right people at the right time. It's funny they're talking about this challenge. It's a challenge that's always there. So it's never going away. It's just how are we improving it? Um, okay, different user interfaces. So here, um, this, this page is really good for me to pass to my customer. That's why this whole deck is very good because it helps them become versed on the tools. If they, go, if they go meet with Sonia and she gets them a meeting with somebody in the technical office and they start saying, hey, are you familiar with the command web or the tiger or the amps? I'm like, what? You know, what do you thought? What's tastes? And um, just to be aware of these acronyms is really important to, to um, have the conversation drive it forward because then you can say, yeah, we don't really fit into Tiger, but we do fill into, fit into AFA to DS or whatever this guy is over here. Um, okay, so development challenges. Uh, here's convergence you're talking about. A lot of this stuff's good. I just want to keep going forward. Um, here's an, another one on the roadmap. I mean, this one's fantastic because uh, this helps them understand, this helps my customer understand where the army is really going. Um, technical drivers for 2019 solutions. Just, just really technical stuff, I'm gonna skip through it. Um, I mean, this is phenomenal stuff, but it's, it's too deep for this video. And I know this video is going long, but I wanna make sure I prepare the most for my customer. And you're just getting Neil raw here. Um, Okay, here they're talking about the tools. I'm gonna to try to go through this really fast. Um, I get really excited when I see this though because it's, it's so helpful to industry. Oh, I mean, look at this right here. How can industry help, right? I, I, I just wanna remind you, I went looking for this, uh, this person, Sonia, who we're gonna meet, and I just typed in her and, and Army, and let me show you, I found this thing here. No, not there, here. It's on filesnc.gov. I don't know what NC is yet, and I haven't even bothered looking, but it's the U.S. Army Technical or Tactical Cloud Technical Exchange meeting. I still don't even know why Sonia's in there, and I'm going to find that out in a minute. But this is huge because if her name is in there, if she's tied to this, then it somehow goes back. But this was just a random document that I found out there, and and that's what we're cruising through. And here is where the Army is telling industry, "How can you help us um, develop modular applications?" So everything about what they talk about when they say software development, they should be saying modular. You know, um, we've designed our apps to be able to run in low bandwidth environments um, and modular. So they all piece together and then midterm and long term, whatever that means to the army. But here work with pores to develop unique war fighting applications. Uh, so this one's important because first off, they need to know what the SDK is, the software development kit. Uh, what SDK are they talking about? But here developing unique war fighting applications. The idea is to get things downstream and make it easy for the war fighter to get the job done down there when they need to do it and, and eliminate all the bureaucracy, even if it's IT bureaucracy that's up there. Um, here's modular applications. My customers should be saying everything we do is cloud first and then we port it over to desktop or something. Um, 
and then, or data center, whatever you want to call it. Long-term, okay, so the, these are things that this, all three of these, the short, long, and midterm should be what my customers are saying they do right now, because this is what I was doing in the past, you know, five years is developing modular applications that can be put into any, um, any OS, uh, web, desktop, uh, I, uh, uh, mobile phones, et cetera, that you need to make the app available for where the user is and not make the user come to you. So that's what they're saying here. And then I don't know who this person is, but this is golden, right? And, and I'm, I don't need to write this down because I know that there's a ton of stuff in this document that I'm going to push forward into my customer. But this person here, Krupal, um, actually just for the fun of it, let's just go find out who that is, right? Army. Um, hey, there's that same PDF. Um, they're all articles. I don't see an order chart, so I don't want to get too distracted on that. But there's a point of contact. It doesn't even matter. I'm, my customer is going to reach out to this person and say, hey, I was looking at this industry day document. And you were talking about short term, midterm, long term. Can we set up a 30 minute call to talk about that? And then she gets a few of her people on there. And now you're in the door. You're learning more about it. Do you have a document that expands? There's so much that can come from this. And all we're doing is looking at a, a year and a half old um, industry day document, which is awesome. Okay, so distributed mission command. I'm going to keep going past there. Here they had a panel. So really important to track this, right? Here they had a panel discussing whatever's here. And I don't really care at the moment. But it's important that if this fit for you, you just found a few, um, a few points of contact. Pr pretty easy. I don't need any of these guys, so I'm going to keep going. Um, distributed mission command and data. This is talking about where they, it's, it's where they send stuff. It's so funny. The internet wasn't even really around when I was in the army. Um, so we did everything with like wire. Um, so, it's, so now it's awesome. Uh, okay. So I'm not that, that old, but you know, the army wasn't modern. Uh, I'm going to skip that because I don't need that. Here's an example, network architecture. By the way, these kind of things are really important. If you're writing RFIs, or RFPs, when you just, uh, or any kind of document, you should see how the army puts out documents of their own and then make sure you're matching it, right? Simple things, right? This is their cloud icon, grab it, use that. Um, the way they describe certain stuff, make sure you're making it look very familiar to them. Just keep on going. Uh, okay, so here objective state for data logistics. It's, it's not this call, so let me keep moving on. Agile, I mean, this stuff is just so great. And I know I said that a hundred times, but. Um, okay, so I'm gonna cruise forward a little faster. So let me pause, here's infrastructure. Um, distributed mission command enables uninterrupted mission command throughout the phases of the operation. Problem description. So the army units are not aligned on a single baseline. This is vital. They need to know you understand their problems. They're describing their problems on each one of these slides. Um, they're not aligned on a single baseline, offering, often requiring units to integrate legacy technology into advanced environments. So it's, it's a mixed environment, happens all the time. Um, the army has unique constraints to include temporary infrastructures, moderate to limited connectivity and um, and then swap constraints in the fact that they want to be able to pick the whole network up, I'm assuming by two people, um, power cooling, whatever. So their goal is to leverage the best available technologies. So if you want to play in that space, and I think this is outside my customer's world, but if they did, I would be calling these people right here and saying, I saw your slide. Can we get 30 minutes of your time? Um, it's not that hard to find these people and get their information. If I can't find it on the internet, I'll go to a small business specialist, have them look it up in the gal, whatever. Um, Okay, so uh, I'm gonna skip all this. This is all really good, but I'm gonna skip it. Hardware infrastructure challenges. And I think this is for um, everything. So this is going out in the field. So I'm gonna skip all that for a second. Uh, network infrastructure challenges. So, um, oh, I see what it's saying. So it's saying predominantly they're, they're focused at command level, which is kind of the higher up compared to a company, which is like a hundred people or below. Um, and so they're trying to figure out, you know, mini networks, I'm assuming. So um, here, look at this. I mean, here's the current challenges. This stuff is exactly what you want to be talking to the customer about. Um, but, it's, but it's not exactly what I need to talk to the person about. So here's PEO. This is tactical computing. It's not us. I'm going to move forward. End-to-end -end cloud is great. Enterprise cloud strategy. Okay. Army has approximately 8,000 apps. Um, So there's mandate there. So Army making progress, but slowly, um, my customer fits into that. So one of my questions is who's, who's part of the data center closure? Commercial sector continues to outpace DOD. Yeah, no kidding. 
um, office premise clouds, some technology policy. So here's uh, goals and objectives. So the, the Army has a hybrid cloud strategy, meaning they have the cloud and, the, and, and their, their own data centers. So here, CIO is in incentivizing. So anybody in software development could be working with anybody out there in the Army and say, hey, let's, you know, that, that's something you should be thinking about. Hey, we can make your current apps cloud-based and all of our current apps, I mean, our new apps are all cloud-based. Centralized contract available for use today for anyone in DOD. So this one here, is an interesting one. Um, and I don't know where this fits, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it anyways. So, uh, cause this, this becomes one of those tough questions, but um, so here I'm gonna sit there and say, um, Army has 8,000 apps they want to make um, cloud ready and reference a single contract that internal users can access to do uh, do that. What's that contract and who owns the management of that effort? Something like that. I'll come back and refine it. But basically I want to know right here, you're saying that they want a centralized contract available for use today by anyone in DOD to convert to the cloud apps. Well, that's pretty, pretty cool. Who's got that app? Um, I want to go find that. And I am going to find it. Um, enterprise computing environment. So here they're just talking about some of the stuff. Again, I want to go pretty fast because I know this video is going long. I hope you find a value. I mean, this kind of stuff is awesome. If, if you're watching this video and you're still at this point and you have a particular um, meeting that you're going after and you want me to help prep you for, let me know and I'll, I'll do the same thing with you because uh, I, I love different examples, not just my own uh, customers. So here's cyber situational awareness. This is just mission command. Um, this is good, but what I'm looking for, they're talking a lot, a lot of this stuff, uh, if you haven't noticed it in this document, I'm gonna go, I keep saying I'm gonna go fast and then I, <laughs> and then I find something really good. A lot of the stuff in this document are great for when I'm talking to the business office or the program office. Um, because I can understand a lot more about their barriers and challenges. But right here, I was going to go fast, and then I see a slide that talks exactly about what I'm looking for, right? Is um, security in the cloud requires different thinking. Security shared between the government and the provider. And, you know, it's kind of, uh, anyway, so currently defined roles and responsibilities not sufficient to address new security models. So they're talking about a lot of these things. Um, what you want to be able to do, especially as um you know, one of the things I say this all the time, and let me stop because I'm, I'm going off on too many tangents. But again, this is the same uh, key takeaways they have on this stuff. So this is the panel three cyber understanding. So let's scroll down. What I'm really looking for, panel four. Oh, wait. Uh, where's the panel three? Maybe. Sorry, I'm going back up here for a second. Okay, so panel three was all those slides I was just looking at and I liked. And so I wanna come back and, um, and figure out how to get in to these people. So I, I think who I wanna reach is Tom Ness and I don't, or Neff, excuse me. I don't know who he is uh, and maybe the G6 office as well, but I don't know who this one is. And I think this is the one I wanna to talk to, but I wanna sit there. Now I have a, raid, a way to get in the door. It's a kind of a piggyback meeting. And I know this is prep for Sonia, but you know, you see these things and maybe she could help make that introduction uh, because they support PEO EIS is, uh, can you introduce us to this guy? So let me just write that question down. Um, can you introduce us to, to Tom is um, presented um, industry, whatever. I'll come back to that because I know I got this whole document. Um, but so down here, all these things I liked, he was on that panel. And if we can reach him and we can say, hey, we were looking at this, we we're looking at this, then he could potentially introduce us to other people. Um, okay, so there, here's the next panel. So the next panel is talking about a lot of this stuff, global, virtual. Oh my God, this is just way too 
too much for, for this. I mean, this is phenomenal, phenomenal, but it's too much. Um, that's funny. I think I kind of hit the uh, lead there. Um, let me pause here because I'm going to bring this back to this guy because I think my computer's dying from going through that deck. Um, you saw as I was going through, I'm just lining up some of the questions. Um, one of my meeting objectives, I just want to close the loop with you on this video because um, if you're watching it, then, then I'm still prepping anyways for myself. So um, one of the big things, there's so much information out there and, and again, rabbit hole, right? But one of the things I really want is I need to get a meeting objective. Uh, basically, I want to get introductions, introductions to the directorate directorate heads for um, what were those ones we wanted? Um, F H E D and F D E D. Um, so that's an immediate objective because those are the people who are really doing the work and we can talk to them about it. Uh, I want to get access to the uh, 12 month cycle. And then, um, so the purpose of the call is that, uh, so here it's learn more about the, uh, uh, the directorates, directorates, uh, she support under USA ISEC. And then I also want to learn about, uh, learn about the structure of netcom. And I didn't do that on this video, but I'll go do some of that prep as well. This person is responsible for both of these and uh, what we might say is, look, we want to track on Netcom, but for today's call, let's just talk about USA ISEC, and then maybe we come back and talk to you another day. She'll talk to us as often as uh, we want, as long as we come in prepared, and if we make a good first impression. Um, so, okay, so uh, meeting objectives, I want to get access to the forecast, I want an introduction to the director at heads, and, um, and, and always one of my favorite, so somewhere down here, I keep saying this, uh, Maybe I didn't put it here, but I'm always looking for, you know, introductions to large primes uh, related to our, our uh, core competencies. So those three things, like if, um, uh, if I get those three things at the moment, shoot, if I get just, um, uh, if I just get one of them at the moment, that'd be fine because even the forecast, if I get that, I couldn't find anything on the forecast, but if she can share on the forecast, um, then that'll really help us understand two things. One is the type of work that's coming downstream, but often in forecasts, you'll have a point of context. So it gives us more information to follow up. We can reach back to Sonia and say, hey, we looked at the forecast. Uh, this opportunity seems to be a solid fit for us. We'd like to explore it more with the point of contact. Could you give us an introduction uh, to the program office who has that forecast so we can you know, have that conversation? Um, we'll see where all this goes. and and how it uh, uh, plays out as we move forward. But, um, okay, so let me wrap that, uh, this particular video up. It's, it's a Neil Raw video, so it's designed to be you watching over my shoulder as I'm doing my research. We've got a call, I just wanna set the scenario again so you understand this. We've got a call coming up this week, and it's with Sonia here, a small business specialist. And almost always, those would be the type of calls I, I prep with. Um, I might show you some CIO ones as well. Um, but we're doing this call and we want to make sure we're prepared with understanding uh, what we're going to talk about, what we want to ask and what we want to get out of the call. That was the purpose of what I was doing today is to learn for myself. What's this organization like? Where do we fit? Right. For example, there was those five directorates or whatever, but we only fit within two. Um, so knowing that allows us to really focus her on how to help us. It's like, Oh, okay. So these two, let me talk more about them. Um, anyway, so having all that, is, I mean, getting all that was the purpose of today's video or, or more importantly, purpose of my activity and the video is just recording it. Um, but keep in mind as you move forward and you do any of this call prep, just uh, tighten down your focus. You're seeing this raw video. So you're not seeing my final thing where I'm going to go in and tighten up my call plan sheet. But when we go in, we're going to be really tight on where she operates and make a good impression on the first call. Um, I don't believe in first impressions. I believe you can always make more impressions later. but um, you know, a good first impression means we, we can start moving that sale down the line, whether it's to a large where we can get in the door now, or whether we start pursuing something that's six to 12 months out, at least we're able to learn about this major command uh, within the army that fits in my customer's wheelhouse 
and then pursue their, their uh, program offices, et cetera, to try to go after work. So anyways, government contracting, not a secret, just a process. All of this digging around is part of the process. Um, for smalls, it's much harder than largest because you're uh, wearing 50 hats. But if you streamline what you do and you focus on similar um, entities, so like the agencies, like just the army, um, you'll be able to do this process pretty smoothly. So go make it happen. I'll see you in the next video. By the way, like this or comment below. Give me any kind of engagement. I'll be happy to sit there and adjust some of my videos to make them even more useful to you. I'm out of here.